Yes, you read that correctly. China has moved a million rabbits into the desert. On first glance, the headline seems to be an otherworldly joke or an appalling experiment in environmental mismanagement, but the reality behind this improbable action is at the heart of one of the most ambitious and forward-thinking environmental ventures of our era. What happened in Inner Mongolia's Dalit banner was no oddity of policy or stunt, but a bold, innovative effort to undo the ruinous impact of desertification. In a planet already struggling with unrelenting environmental disasters, from sea level rises to disappearing glaciers, few challenges are as pressing or as complicated as the conversion of previously arable land into desolate desert. Desertification poses a threat to biodiversity, agriculture, water supply, and human survival. One of the countries worst hit by this crisis is China, especially in its north and west, where huge areas of fertile land are already engulfed by sand and dust. If this kind of story touches your heart, if you're someone who cares about truth, responsibility, and speaking up for the voiceless, please like this video, subscribe to our channel Spark Science, and share it with someone who should hear it. Let's get started. The Dalit Banner Desert Reclamation Project, though sometimes neglected in international discourse on climate solutions, is one of the most intriguing and ambitious environmental endeavors ever undertaken. It did not just seed trees or broadcast seeds over dunes, it aimed to re-engineer life itself on a barren landscape, converting tracts of the Gobi Desert into viable ecosystems. In so doing, it not only remapped the territory but also ignited a wider international movement toward environmentally friendly land rehabilitation. To appreciate the unprecedented quality of the achievement, it is helpful to look back at the circumstances that necessitated such extreme action in the first place. The Dalit Banner area of Inner Mongolia had been on the front line of China's environmental wars for a long time. By the 1980s, land that once harbored crops, animals, and flourishing villages was alien and nearly beyond recognition. Its soil was depleted, its surface stripped by wind and water, and its water supplies reduced to a trickle. The advancing sand dunes were not just a symbol of empty desolation, they were potent forces of destruction, engulfing farms, entombing homes, and destabilizing whole communities. The Gobi Desert, already one of the largest and most unforgiving in the world, was moving inexorably, devouring thousands of hectares of fertile land at a runaway rate. Under the United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification, almost a quarter of China's entire land area was already decertified, affecting nearly 400 million people. The reasons were intricate and very much intertwined, unsustainable farming practices for decades, uncontrolled deforestation, and overgrazing of ecologically fragile grasslands had left the land barren, as the intensifying effects of climate change added fuel to the burns. Initial efforts to reverse the issue relied heavily on tree planting campaigns. Theoretically, these initiatives provided hope, but they failed in practice. Trees did not find it easy to establish roots in the dry, impoverished soil, and the absence of consistent rainfall consigned many ventures to failure. In other instances, well-intentioned efforts planted non-indigenous species that upset ecosystems, causing unforeseen effects that created a further problem. It was quickly apparent, however, that fighting desertification would involve a great deal more than tree planting or symptom patching, it would involve a fundamental redesign of the land itself. Seeing the gravity of the situation, China adopted a new approach that combined modern technology with old ecological knowledge. This change was best exemplified by the Dalit Banner Desert Reclamation Project. While previous programs used vegetation as a uniform measure, this effort sought to restore the entire ecosystem, soil, water, vegetation, and wildlife, treating them as complementary parts of an integrated living system. The strategy was multifaceted and highly responsive. Scientists and engineers used the latest technologies including satellite imaging, remote sensing, and surveillance by drones to analyze land degradation and monitor environmental shifts in real time. They implemented soil reparation techniques such as biomulching, a layering of organic material over the surface of the desert to conserve valuable moisture, provide nutrients, and prevent erosion. Windbreaks of indigenous shrubs and grasses were seeded in well-planned rows to stabilize sand dunes and protect sensitive soil from additional wind erosion, one of the principal causes of desert expansion. But the most astonishing and unconventional feature of the plan, 
the one that gained global attention, was the option to bring animals into the picture, namely rabbits. On first consideration, putting rabbits into the desert appeared crazy, if not irresponsible. Rabbits are notorious in most of the world, especially in Australia, where they became invasive pests that destroyed crops and destabilized ecosystems. But within the carefully controlled and closely monitored environment of Dalit Banner, rabbits were playing a specific ecological role. Their diet, ruinous on agricultural land, was beneficial in desolate desert environments where plants found it difficult to find a place. Rabbit grazing and foraging broke up the hard outer crust of the earth, facilitating seed germination. Their digging work aerated the ground, making it more water-attentive and conducive to root growth, while their droppings were natural fertilizer that improved the nutritional content of the land. With time, these activities built small microhabitats that favored new vegetation growth. Just as critical, rabbits provided a lost link in the rejuvenating food chain, being eaten by native predators and restoring balance to the ecosystem. The secret, naturally, was control. Contrasting with the wild rabbit explosion in Australia, strict monitoring systems were put in place by the Chinese government to avert overpopulation and make the rabbit's role one of useful rather than harmful influences. In Dalit Banner, one million rabbits were not pests, ecological agents, well-managed players in the restoration process. The outcome of this holistic practice was breathtaking. Over 15,000 hectares of once barren ground had been reclaimed by 2010. Where dust and dunes had previously stretched out, native grasses, shrubs, and even diminutive trees now thrived. More moisture was retained in the soil, the local water table stabilized, and wildlife returned. Birds, insects, and small mammals began repopulating the restored ecosystems, increasing biodiversity in ways none of these interventions could have done in isolation. The effect extended beyond the landscape. Villages that had been abandoned because conditions were not survivable started to experience returning residents. Farming tentatively reasserted itself as the land regained its fertility, and with it came economic stability, food security, and community rejuvenation. Schools reopened, cultural practices resumed, and renewed optimism infused the area. What was once an environmental wasteland became a landscape of resilience and rebirth. Dalit Banner's success echoed well outside Inner Mongolia. International agencies and governments started to pay attention, realizing that what could be learned here might be replicated elsewhere where similar threats existed. The African Union's Great Green Wall Project, intended to stop desertification along the Sahel, took direct inspiration from China's activities, as cooperative initiatives extended into the Middle East and Central Asia. Still, all these successes notwithstanding, the task was daunting. Deserts are not to be pushed back lightly, and even small advances require decades of focused dedication and ongoing upkeep. The environment of northern China is harsh, with rainfalls annually frequently below 200 mm. It was not only technology or environmental sleight of hand that distinguished Dalit Banner, but political will and distant vision supporting the endeavor. The government of China realized sooner rather than later that short-term campaigns would be inadequate, and instead pledged a vision of generational sustainability, integrating local communities into the fabric of the project. Farmers and herders were educated in sustainable farming practices, learning rotational grazing strategies that avoided overgrazing of delicate pastures yet sustained livestock. Crops were chosen for drought tolerance and harmony with native plants so that farming would supplement instead of clash with the healing landscape. Community nurseries were open to grow native trees for reforestation, making locals directly interested in the program's success. Education was also critical. Schools started to include environmental studies as part of their curriculum, teaching children a strong sense of the vulnerability of their earth and the need for stewardship. This cultural transformation made environmental preservation no longer just a government initiative,